When I went overseas, I was a PFC. And then as we got into combat, I was promoted to staff sergeant. I had 12 men in my squad. We were brothers because we, we had to protect each other and as well as accomplish our mission. My division, the Timberwolf 104th Infantry Division, was fighting uh, inch by inch to get to the city of Cologne. Aachen, Germany was a city that every building was uh, smashed or bombed or shot with artillery shells. And it was my first uh, entry into combat, actual combat, where I saw buddies of mine killed and wounded. And I saw this one man running with a patch over his eye. And I didn't know who he was. It turned out to be my best friend. He'd just gotten shot and he was running to the rear. And that, that made the biggest impact on me. I realized then we were in it for keeps and uh, I was lucky to escape unharmed at that venture. We captured the city of Cologne and down a few miles from us were, was a bridge at a place called Remagen. They call it the Remagen Bridgehead. The Germans had set it up so that as the last German soldier got across, they would blow it up. Well, they pulled the trigger and it didn't blow. It damaged the bridge a little bit, but the troops, our troops could go across. They fought their way across, captured the bridge, and immediately started building pontoon bridges for armored infantry to start moving across on tanks and on foot. We heard about this in Cologne. They immediately put us on uh, foot soldiers on top of tanks, crossed the bridge, went 200 miles behind the enemy lines. We'd go into towns and, this, and the army, the German army is just leaving on the other side of town as we're entering. And uh, they're bombing our, with artillery, they're trying to stop us but killing their own people while they're doing it. And uh, the citizens, the German citizens, when we tell them it was their, their own soldiers, they, they couldn't believe it, they wouldn't believe it. They were very defiant. One example was uh, we had came through a farm field and the farmers were behind haystacks shooting at us with rifles. And a friend of mine had just come back from the hospital from being wounded was riding next to me and he got shot from one of these farmers. And I was so upset, so angry, that when we got to the first little town, I jumped off and just started shooting anything and everything. I just reacted as, as, in defense of my, my buddy. You are trained as a soldier to shoot, to kill, to maim. That's what you're trained to do. It, it makes you into something that you don't, if you think about it, you don't care, care to be. We, we lose sight of, of humanity. We get away from what, what, you're all, what it's all about. And then all of a sudden, here was a, a trailer serving coffee and donuts. I came upon the Salvation Army near the combat zone, very near the front line, in a situation that you would not expect to have 
that kind of service, that touch of home. The importance of the Salvation Army being in the front lines with us, not only do you have the coffee and donuts, but it broke the severity of the, of the thrust you were making to take life. It reminded us of the love that we had with our country and our family made us feel like that fighting was worthwhile, connecting back to what you're, why you're fighting, why you're even there. They are the one, one organization that I know cares. And if there's an opportunity to help financially or help professionally, volunteer, commit. Be part of it.